Hello, everyone. My name is Samuel, and I work as a software engineer at Framna, Sweden, specifically the Stockholm studio. Framna is a product development agency that has offices in multiple countries, including here in Denmark. So what can you expect from my talk today? Well, first, I'll introduce you to the MetaQuest. I will introduce you to the MetaSpatial SDK. And we will make an existing Android app immersive. And briefly, we will look into 3D. So I have to make a couple of assumptions since this, short, this talk is really short. First, first, I'll assume you have experience with Android. You have some basic Gradle knowledge, some practical game P experience, as well as Compose UI experience. So what is the MetaQuest? Well, it's a headset that allows you to have mixed reality experiences. It has a couple of cameras at the front that map and project the world around you. And also comes with two controllers that you can see. So in mixed reality, you can combine digital elements like screens and 3D objects in the physical world. Effectively, you'd have the physical world as your infinite digital canvas. So the MetaQuest runs MetaHorizon OS, and that's built on the Android open source project. On top of this is the MetaSpatial SDK. It's built on Kotlin, and it has first-class support for Jetpack Compose. So what is the MetaSpatial SDK? Well, it's a framework that allows us to build immersive experiences with, on the MetaQuest. It allows us to use Kotlin and the Android ecosystem instead of using like a game engine, for example, Unity. And the SDK is built on an architectural pattern called ECS that stands for Entity Component System. So an entity is simply a wrapper around a group of components, like this. And components are simply reusable data objects that contain various attributes. And each entity has an associated ID. And a system, well, basically is just an object that runs on every tick, and they use queries to access entities and components on every tick. And these these systems basically create behaviors at runtime. So now we will look into actually porting an app to the MetaQuest. For this, I will make use of an app you're all familiar with, the Kotlin Conf app. It's a standard multi-platform project targeting iOS, Android, web, and backend. And everything has a shared UI. And for dependency injection, I'll make use of Coin, of course. Uh, so zooming into the Android main, or the Android app module, we will make some changes to the build.gradle file. We will create two product flavors, one for mobile and one for the MetaQuest. Then we'll add the SDK and some of the libraries. These are not all of them, but it's, a, it's enough for us to start at least. Uh, so then back to our file structure, we can see we have the MetaQuest package now. So in the package, we're going to create a new activity. And this is, our, this is going to be our entry point to the VR world, our, our mixed reality scene. It subclasses app system activity, and that comes from the SDK. So next, we're going to register a couple of features. We're going to use VR, in this case, and Compose. So then we're going to override our on-scene-ready lifecycle function. And this lifecycle function is basically call, called when the VR scene is fully initialized and is ready for interaction. And these are just a, a bunch of setup methods that you can see. So before we continue, I need to introduce you to a concept called panel. Um, panels are simply a container for 2D content. Think of it as a really big screen in the immersive scene. They support both embedding activities as well as composables. So how would we create a panel? Well, first, we need to register a panel with an ID. And then we need to place the panel in a 3D scene. So registering a panel looks something like this. We override the register panels function. We pass an ID to the panel registration object. And then we pass a reference to the main activity. The SDK will instantiate this activity when the panel is created. So finally, we add some configuration, which is the height and the width of the panel. And this is in meters. Then back to our mixed reality act, uh, activity, we're going to place this, the panel in the 3D scene. We're going to call the create panel entity, use the ID we defined before, apply a bunch of transforms, positioning and rotation. The SDK makes use of left-hand coordinate system. So positive x is to the right, 
positive y is upward and positive z is forward. And the t and the q simply refer to translation and rotation. And finally, we're going to add a grabbable component. This basically allows us to move the panel wherever we want to in the 3D space. So what does this look like from the MetaQuest? You can see it works as expected. And controller input translates basically into touch input from, that you'd expect on Android. Navigation works as expected, and I can also move the screen in 3D space. So now that we can create one panel, what if we wanted to create multiple panels? Say we want to modify the speaker screen to open a separate panel when a speaker is clicked on. Well, to do this, first we need to spawn a new panel in a location in 3D space. Then we need to modify our existing implementation or our existing navigation. So now we take a look at spawning a second panel. We're going to create a new interface in the common mail module. And both the shared UI and the MetaQuest package will have access to this. And the interface will, will basically enable us to render a panel dynamically at runtime. So then we switch back to our uh, MetaQuest package and start to create the implementation of the panel provider. So that looks something like this. First, we obviously assign an ID, as we saw before. Then we get an instance of the running app system activity using a helper function. We register the panel, as we saw before. And finally, you can see in the view lambda, we create a compose view, and we set the compose content directly. So then we need to place the panel in the scene. As, as before, we simply call create panel, pass an ID, Transform and a grabbable. Then back in our mixed reality activity, we're going to use coin to provide the implementation of the panel provider. So next, we need to modify our existing navigation in the app. So this is what this current speaker navigation looks like. It simply has a speaker screen. And on spe when on speaker is clicked, navigates as usual on Android. So we modify it to look something like this. First, we're going to get the panel provider from Coin. It's nullable because it's only provided from the MetaQuest package or the MetaQuest flavor of the app. Next, we're going to check if it exists. And if it does, we're going to pass in our speaker details directly. Ideally, this kind of logic should be encapsulated in a separate navigation layer. But for this basic example, I guess it will work. So what does this look like in practice? It skipped a frame, but you'll see. When you click a speaker, the panel is dynamically updated. And now you have multiple screens, and you can move both of them at the same time. So everything works perfectly, right? Everything that was in the Android app. Well, let's take a look at the navigation screen. Well, on mobile, to zoom in, you would use the pinch to zoom gesture. Well, how does that work on VR? Here you can see I'm trying to zoom in with two controllers. And yeah, I guess it doesn't really work right. So if we take a look at the map composable, we can see it's using a transformable modifier. And this is what creates the gesture behavior on mobile. So how could we solve this, this problem? Well, one way is we could change the behavior on the MetaQuest flavor and implement a zoom with joystick instead. So basically, joystick up would zoom in, and joystick down would zoom out. Essentially, this would translate into mouse scroll events. Thankfully, someone in the community created an open source modifier that supports the zoom on mouse scroll. So we're going to slap that on, our map composable, and let's see the result. You can see I can now zoom in much nicer, and I don't have to use two controllers at the same time. It might not be easy to see, like my finger pushing, but believe me, I did it. So now that we've done the 2D, uh, let's take a look at how we can maybe improve the experience with 3D. And for this, obviously, we're going to use our favorite mascot, Cody, and bring his representation into 3D in VR. So to bring Cody into 3D, first, we need to have a 3D model from our favorite 3D model tools. And then we need to export this in a GLTF format. So here you can see I have. Cody in Blender. He's fully rigged, meaning he can move smoothly in the 3D space. And at the bottom, you can see a bunch of keyframes. And this basically holds animation data. 
So then I'm just going to export G the file as a GLTF. The default settings just work just fine. And GLTF will e encode your uh, animations, and they'll be accessible at runtime with IDs. So back to the activity, we're going to create a new entity. This time we're going to assign a mesh component, passing in our 3D asset. And this 3D asset is placed in the standard assets folder that you're used to in Android. Next, we're going to apply transform, so a translation and a rotation. And then we're going to scale it down. The reason why I have these really small numbers is because I kind of didn't realize while working in Blender that it was in meters, so I had a really huge 3D model. Uh, so now we scale it down. So this is what it looks like when you run the app. You can see I have a companion next to me, Cody. He's just chilling. And I can use the app as usual. But you can see he looks pretty dead here. So perhaps we can bring him to life a little bit. Let's say we want to listen for input events. So A, to jump, and then B, to wave. So back to our entity creation of Cody. We're going to add two new components. The first one is going to be the identifier, which we'll use to get the Cody entity at runtime. And the second one will be a controller component. And this component will allow us to listen for uh, button presses and controller input. So the identifier looks something like this. It's essentially just setting an ID. Then we create a Kodi input listener system. This system is going to run on every tick. It's kind of like a frame, but not really. And then we're going to query for all entities with a controller component. And another query we're going to use to query for Kodi's entity with the ID we defined earlier. So next, we're going to check if a button was pressed. And then using bitwise operations, we're going to check if button A or button B was pressed. So if any of them was pressed, then we're going to get Cody's entity, add an animated component. And this animated component will allow us to specify which animation to play based on the animation ID. And then back to our mixed reality activity, we're going to register the component and, system, uh, and our system input listener. So what does this look like then? There you can see. You might not be able to see my finger pressing A and B, but believe me, I'm pressing A and B. And he's jumping quite nicely. So there we have it. We have a fully immersive KotlinConf app on the MetaQuest. Yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs> Don't forget to vote. <laughs>